We begin our coverage of Eastern European steam in Russia and the Ukraine. Perhaps the most impressive characteristic of former Soviet locomotives was their great height. With a generous vertical loading gauge of almost 17 and a half feet, engines 17 feet high were not uncommon. This together with the Soviet broad rail gauge of 5 feet, gave the locomotives a most imposing appearance. Another uniquely Soviet practice were the safety rails fitted around the walkway on some of the older engines. On account of hazardous ice, forming during the severe winters. Further concession to engine crews were the timber-lined, fully enclosed large cabs, giving protection against the harsh climate. Most Soviet locomotives were built in the former Soviet Union and its satellite states. An exception was Class YE, supplied under lease by Baldwin and Alco in the US from 1943. All regular mainline steam has now vanished. However, several examples of most major locomotive types have been retained for special tour operations. Easily holding the world record for the most numerous steam locomotive type were the E-Series 010s, of which over 12,000 were constructed. The original E-Class, built essentially for freight and shunting work, appeared in 1912. Three improved variations followed some years later, designated EU, EM and ER. The following scenes were recorded during the 1980s and 90s, in some instances on lines not having seen steam for many years. Arguably the most successful Soviet locomotive design ever produced was the S-Class 262. Built from 1910, the type became the mainstay of passenger operations, other than the heaviest expresses. 1925 saw an improved version, designated SU. The striking, semi-streamlined P36 484s, introduced in 1950, were to become the final culmination of express passenger design. They were an impressive modern locomotive, fitted with roller bearings and a mechanical stoker. The type had a short life due to impending dieselization, all being prematurely withdrawn from regular use by the early 1970s.
The L-Class 210s, built from 1945, became the principal post-war freight design. Well regarded by crews, they were fitted with mechanical stokers and box pock wheel sets. The LV class, built from 1954, was essentially a 2102 version of the L, with many component parts in common, and again a noticeably high set boiler. Modern features included roller bearings and a mechanical stoker. Interestingly, after cessation of Russian production in 1956, the successful LV design was adopted by China in 1957 to become the QJ class. The SO class 2100 appeared from 1934 as a development of the E by incorporating a leading bogey to the Type E chassis, thus improving crew riding comfort. A larger boiler was also fitted. Later modifications, designated SOM and SON, referred to mechanical stoking and oil firing, respectively. The Soviet big engine policy in 1931 saw the production of a freight type 2102. Designated FD, the type incorporated many American style features, including mechanical stokers, bar frames, and box box wheels. Most FDs were displaced with this thread of electrification in the 1950s, whilst many were sold to China as a gesture of solidarity, where they were re-gauged and named the Friendship Class. An FD pilots an SO out of Korostol in the Ukraine during wintry conditions of February 1994. Shunting duties, particularly for industrial operations, often fell to the hands of either 040 or 060 tanks. Many of the latter were designated 9P, with later improved batches carrying the additional suffix M.
With most 040 tanks having been withdrawn by the mid-1970s, a curious example, supplied by Bayer Peacock in 1932, was kept operational for visiting tour groups at Korosten in the Ukraine. Green liverid P36, seen between Kirov and Kotlas, northeast of Moscow. January 1993. The following scenes are in the Ukraine.
A special 150th anniversary was held during July 1996 to celebrate the opening of the first section of the Hungarian Railways in 1846. Many special trains and a parade of historic locomotives were arranged in Budapest. The well-attended event included visiting locos from other countries and rarely seen exhibits steamed for the occasion. The 100 years old train, hauled by Hungarian Railways veterans, 1870 built, 060, number 269, and 1900 built, 440, number 204, was a star attraction. Perhaps one of the most interesting visiting locos was 1922 built Yugoslav 262 01 appearing for the first time in its preserved state. A pinnacle of German achievement in the mid 1930s when the glamour of streamlining took centre stage was class 01 Pacific number 1102 The air smoothed casing was reminiscent of the famous class 05 of which only two were built number 05001 achieved a then world speed record for steam when it achieved 125 and a half miles per hour with a light test train in 1935. Another German engine of rather striking appearance was 1938 built class 02 Pacific number 201. Poland will be well regarded in future steam archives as being the final stamping ground for regular mainline steam in Europe. Wolstein in western Poland has become the epicenter of 21st century steam and a mecca for steam enthusiasts. Wolstein Depot evokes a genuine mood of an almost bygone era, providing steam motive power for both freight and passenger services. German built from 1906 the class P8 460s were absorbed into Polish railway stock from the mid 1940s, becoming designated OK1. The type were the mainstay of passenger operations on secondary routes until superseded by the handsomely proportioned OL49. These Polish-built 262s 
which began to appear from the early 1950s, became the standard post-war passenger design and were immediately popular with crews. In common with a number of other Polish loco designs, a rather unconventional system of smoke deflector design was employed. Curiously, deflector plates of various shapes placed high on the smoke box directed airflow back past or up from the chimney. An identical shape and function seemingly never standardized. The OL49 Hall 5.30 a.m. passenger train to Poznan passes Volstin Shed in May 2002. Class OK-22-460, number 31, the only one of its type still in operational condition, was Polish built in 1929. Polish-built standard class TKT-48 282 tanks began to monopolize branch line work from the late 1940s. Rather ungainly looking engines with huge high-placed deflectors, few remain in operational condition. Ever wondered how many kids can fit in the cab of a TKT-48? Polish railways received over 500 class S-160 280s of the former United States Army Transportation Corps after hostilities ended in 1945. Designated TR-203 with very typical ALCO features, 
These reliable locos were employed mainly on freight and shunting duties. Emerging from Polish builders in 1946, class TY-45 210s were of deceptively light construction, ideally suited for lightly laid track. Although essentially a freight type, in common with most Polish designs, they could also be seen on passenger workings. again a product of post-war Poland, were to become the nation's final steam express class, hauling most prestigious passenger diagrams on non-electrified routes. the Nazis began a huge push to overcome locomotive shortages throughout occupied Europe. The result, in part, was the mass production of the German Class 52, 2-10-0. Over 6,000 of these Kriegsloks were built many remaining in formerly occupied countries after the war. The Polish stock of these austerity engines became the class TY2.
during World War II, many Class 52s were built in Poland to become Class TY-42. Notice the economically built Vanen tender, or so-called bathtub tender. In 1943, the Germans began production of a heavier Kriegslok, Class 42, designated TY-3 in Polish stock. After 1945, a further batch were built in Poland to become Class TY-43. Never as popular as the lighter TY-2, the most obvious visual difference being the angled running plate above the cylinders. Polish built TY-51-210 based on the 1947 American supplied TY-246 began to appear in the 1950s. Designed for heavy freight haulage but also used on passenger duties, the type was restricted to the main line due to their heavy axle load. Thirty-four examples of German-built Class 03 Pacifics, built from 1930, passed into Polish ownership after 1945, when they were reclassified PM2. Perhaps the most celebrated Polish pre-war design was the class PM36, the sole member of its class to survive the war, 1937 built green liveried number no. 2, now kept at Volstein, won design awards at the Paris exhibition of that year. Another Polish variation designated PM3, sporting rather ungainly bathtub shroud streamlined casing, appeared in 1940. One remaining example can be seen at the Warsaw Railway Museum. July 1995, and a special in the Kabovka region hauled by green liveried OL-12-262 and TR-12-280. These Austrian-built locos are kept at Habovka Museum Depot. The OL-12, built in 1912, and the TR-12 in 1921.
the need for a reliable and economic shunting loco prompted Polish builders, among others, to produce a standard 060 tank from 1947. Classified TKH, these widely dispersed engines were commonly known as Ferrum 47s. The always popular May Day celebrations held at Wolstein in 2002 attracted a number of visiting locos. Star performers including Green Livery OL49 number 111 and TR5-280, number 65. The following scenes are of regular revenue earning steam services radiating from Volstin in 2000 and 2002. The curious arc patterning, which often appears on deflectors, actually indicates the loco cleaner's reach limit.
visitors to Volstin often have the opportunity of a cab ride. In this instance, on the Lesnau Volstin regular passenger service. Locos in nighttime repose create their own mood. Minor repairs and maintenance are a feature of interest at Vorstin Depot.
Scenes like this have become history across Poland. The one exception being Volstyn. A number of narrow gauge branch lines served as important connections to trunk routes across Poland. These have almost disappeared in recent years along with a number of quaint railway practices. One survivor, based at Niesno, east of Poznan, operates a freight and passenger service, occasionally hauled by a class PX48080. Polish built from the 1930s, these tiny titans could often be seen dwarfed by standard gauge wagons, transported on narrow gauge bogies. former East Germany, where standard gauge steam lingered into the early 1990s, albeit generally on standby or occasional shunting turns. However, German-built steam on the narrow gauge in many cases survived, in large part due to tourism. The Harzquebahn-Selkettelbahn system 
near the old West German border operates standard 2 10-2 meter gauge tanks. Built from 1931, they were rebuilt in the mid-1950s to the same design. A single 060 tank remains. The original class members were built from 1914. This remaining engine, based at Wernigerode, is now used for trip workings and shunting work. Notice the standard gauge wagon, transported piggyback on meter gauge bogies. The station at Steger forms the connection between the two nominally separate systems. A curious and unique feature at Steger is a turning loop, enabling the whole train to be turned for the return journey.
Another unique survivor on this system is this 1939 built 262 tank. The 750mm gauge Kranzal Kurort system near the Czech border operate standard 2102 tanks. Built from 1928, they were rebuilt from 1954 to the original design.
The 750mm gauge sits out system, located further east, also near the Czech border, again operate standard 2102 tanks, with a similar history to the 2102s on other systems. The double departure from Wurzdorf Junction Station is a major drawcard for enthusiasts. The 750mm gauge Radebul Ost Radeburg line near Dresden is another system monopolized by standard 2102 tanks. The labor intensive coaling of locos seen here at Radebul Ost is carried out by the manoeuvring of bins by crane.
The three-road subshed at the line's northern terminus of Radeberg has its own charm and is little changed from the 1930s. The Oshatz Kemlitz line, west of Dresden, operate 750mm gauge Saxon Mayer 0440 tanks. These four cylinder compounds, built from 1892, were rebuilt in 1962. Double heading is often necessary in order to handle heavy, standard gauge wagon loads riding on narrow gauge bogies, known as roll wagons.
The historic Maya logos are culled at Mugeln Shed by means of modern conveyor belt. Another 750mm gauge line, south of Dresden, connects Freital Heinsberg with Kurort Kipsdorf. Standard 2102 tanks, the usual motive power.
The 750mm gauge Rugen Island Line operates two very distinct loco types. A 280 tank built in the late 1930s and an 080 well tank, the last active survivor of a class built from 1913. The unique 900mm gauge Doberan line, located further west on the north coast, also operates two loco types. This 282 tank, produced in the early 1930s, shares passenger duties with early 1950s built 080 tank. Street running, where the train effectively becomes a tram, is an interesting feature of the line.
Romania in 1995 still had a number of active steam locos, used mostly only on special workings. Many Romanian locos originated from German builders. Examples include this G10 on mainline excursion duties, carrying Romanian number 50047. These O10 freight engines began to appear from the early 1900s. German-built P8 460s, as seen in Poland, also found their way to Romania. Number 230-142 is a popular choice for special tour trains. Note the small smoke deflectors attached to the chimney. This well turned out Kriegslok, with almost identical appearance to those seen in Poland, can also be found on special tour trains. Another splendid looking locomotive from the German stable is this Series 231 Pacific. Built by Henschel in 1922, 
This express passenger design is another popular choice for special tour trains. Romanian built in 1939, this elegant 284 Series 142 can also be regularly seen on tour trains. As standard gauge meets narrow gauge, we're reminded, like Poland, regular steam-worked narrow gauge railways across Romania have now virtually disappeared, apart from special operations. Such an example of this is seen here, north of Bucharest. The two locos in charge are an 080 well tank and a Romanian version PX48, which is similar in appearance to the Polish variant. One active, steam-worked forestry railway survived into the 21st century. The 750mm gauge Vissure de Sur system, close to the Ukraine border, still gathers timber from the remote forests of the Carpathian Mountains. Class 764-080 tanks are the usual motive power on the 41 kilometers long route along the Vesa Valley.
most locos emanated from Hungarian, German and Romanian builders. The most recent improved version, 764s, to the same design, were produced in the 1980s. A passenger service is also provided for timber workers and locals. Historic 1921 German built 763 class 060 tank is occasionally pressed into service on special trains. Water is replenished from the river by means of the loco steam pump. Nineteen sixteen Munich built four six zero tank is seen on the now closed Commandau forestry system. Yeah. 